Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Fat Brands Inc. Second Quarter 2020 Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants have been placed in a listen-only mode. The lines will be open for your questions following the presentation. Please note that this conference is being recorded today, August 6, 2020. On the call today from Fat Brands are President and Chief Executive Officer Andy Wiederhorn and Chief Financial Officer Rebecca Hershinger. I would now like to turn the call over to Ashley DeSimone of ICR to begin. Thank you, Operator, and good afternoon, everyone. By now, everyone should have access to our earnings release, which can be found on our Investor Relations website at ir.fatbrands.com in the press release section. Before we begin, I need to remind everyone that part of our discussion today will include forward-looking statements. These forward-looking statements are not guarantees of future performance, and therefore, undue reliance should not be placed upon them. Actual results may differ materially from those indicated by these forward-looking statements due to a number of risks and uncertainties. The company does not undertake to update these forward-looking statements at a later date. For a more detailed discussion of the risks that could impact future operating results and financial conditions, please see today's earnings release and our recent SEC filings. During today's call, the company may discuss non-GAAP financial measures, which it believes can be useful in evaluating its performance. The presentation of this additional information should not be considered in isolation, nor as a substitute for results prepared in accordance with GAAP. Reconciliations to comparable GAAP measures are available in today's earnings release. I would now like to turn the call over to Andy Wiederhorn, President and CEO. Andy? Thank you, Ashley. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for joining us on the call today. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. This afternoon, we made our second quarter financial results publicly available, so please refer to our press release and our earnings supplement, which is available in the Invest section of our website at www.fatbrands.com. Both contain details about the quarter, which closed on June 28th. This is our third investor conference call since the beginning of the pandemic, and I want to use this time to briefly discuss the second quarter and revisit our pandemic strategy and then give you the business and corporate update through July and go to Q&A. Our company results are consistent with what the industry as a whole is experiencing, including a more recent uptick in system-wide sales at certain locations open at varying and muted operating capacities as their localities allow. The industry has also seen shifting consumer behavior, which favors takeout, to-go, and outdoor dining. As we've discussed in previous calls, we were early adopters of online ordering across all of our brands, and for delivery, we have enterprise agreements in place with the four major delivery platforms. While this environment is extremely challenging, our brands and franchisees have been in a position to navigate successfully through this new landscape, and as we've highlighted before, the strategy behind this includes providing to our partners operating practices and procedures that align with local, state, and federal regulations, safety, sanitation, and social distancing measures to provide comfort to guests and employees, redesigned, simplified menu and serving options, and finally, leadership and guidance on securing PPP and disaster recovery loans, negotiating rent deferrals or concessions, managing the supply chain, and procuring PPE and other supplies or equipment to enhance social distancing within the dining room. We continue to work closely with our franchisees to ensure they are empowered as possible and can optimally weather the storm, which they are doing tirelessly. We have seen an uplift in sales as we moved from midday, sorry, mid-May to the end of July, up 44% over that time period, actually. This reflects the easing of shelter-in-place orders and phased reopenings across the country, bolstered by stronger performance at Fatburger, Buffalo's Cafe, and Hurricane Grill and Wings. While our operations and supply chain teams continue to consist, continue to assist our franchisees in all areas relating to managing through the pandemic, our development, construction, and training teams remain focused on the robust pipeline of new stores we anticipate opening for the rest of the year. It's a very strong year for new store openings. Let me give you a quick overview about our development pipeline as of today in comparison to a year ago. During the second quarter, franchisees opened five new locations, bringing the year to a date a total of 15, with an additional 18 stores slated to open by the end of the year. We plan to end 2020 with 33 new stores in total, and this compares to 2019 when we opened 24 new locations. So despite the effects of the pandemic, 
Our development pipeline has remained strong and a key pillar of our organic growth strategy. The primary limitation in opening new stores has been the ability of our training teams to travel for the elements of training that need to be done in person. Like many others across multiple industries, the pandemic has meant vectoring to virtual operations, and our teams have conducted virtual training sessions to the extent possible. Turning now to the second quarter, total revenue decreased to $3.1 million from $5.9 million in the second quarter of 2019. Our system-wide sales decreased 51% year-over-year, reflecting the impact of the pandemic on our business. Excluding Ponderosa and Bonanza brands, system-wide sales have decreased 29% year-over-year. Costs and expenses were $8.9 million in the quarter compared to $3.7 million last year. Like our revenue, this increase in costs and expenses reflects the effects of the pandemic with a $3.2 million goodwill and trademark impairment charge related to Ponderosa and Bonanza Steakhouse brands. So really, the cost, the actual cost is $5.7 million, not $8.9 million if you subtract out the $3.2 million goodwill impairment. It also reflects a $1 million refranchising loss related to restaurants held for sale and a $907,000 provision for bad debt from franchisees that have closed or will close. In addition, G&A also includes a full quarter of depreciation and amortization expense related to Elevation Burger, which we acquired in June of 2019. The combined effects of lower revenue and higher costs resulted in adjusted EBITDA loss at $361,000 for the quarter. And this compares to an adjusted EBITDA profit of $2.0 million in the second quarter of 2019. Shifting away from our operating performance, we continue to make progress in our liquidity and capital resources, and following the close of the quarter, we successfully raised a total of $15 million in equity, which includes approximately $9 million in gross proceeds from the underwritten sale of the 8 and a quarter percent Series B cumulative preferred stock in warrants, both of which began trading on the NASDAQ on July 14th, and an additional $6 million from the exchange of a portion of the Series A preferred stock, accrued dividends thereon, and into Series B stock, as well as the exchange of Series A1 into Series B. These transactions simplified our capital structure. I'd also like to note that of the Series B raised, nearly $3 million is owned by company insiders or affiliates, we believe, which we believe demonstrates a true sense of confidence in our company. All in all, these financing activities represent another milestone for us as we position ourselves for future growth opportunities. We also repurchased 509604 of the company's $7.20 strike price warrants issued in connection with our 2018 financing, therefore reducing significantly the number of outstanding warrants. While we are currently working through a challenging time in our industry, we are a stronger company today due to the progress and strategies we have achieved and executed year to date, and we are well positioned to drive our growth both, both organically and through opportunistic acquisitions in the years ahead. In fact, there are several acquisition opportunities we are currently considering at this time. While the duration and severity of the ultimate impact in COVID-19 on the industry remains uncertain, we are very excited about the platform and our future, and we are just well positioned to take advantage of these opportunities. Before we open the call for your questions, I'd like to once again extend my heartfelt thank you to all of our team members, franchise partners, and their employees, as they have done an outstanding job during these unprecedented times in adapting and rising to meet the challenges our industry faces. I'm very proud of our team and our partners and remain excited for the opportunities in front of us, especially as we participate in the industry's recovery period. With that, operator, please open the line for questions. Certainly. If you'd like to register a question, you can press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone, and you'll hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. And if your question's been answered, you wish to withdraw, you can press 1-3. Again, that is 1-4 to queue up, and one moment, please, for the first question. Our first question is from line of Joe Gomes from Noble Capital. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Quick question here on, you know, it's been somewhat of a roller coaster ride here on the COVID. Um, as we've seen, certain areas seem to become hot spots again. Just wondering. How is that impacting, if it has, um, you guys? I mean, is, uh, some of these rolling hotspots in places you know, like Georgia, Texas, and Florida? Yep, good question. The, the short answer is, in those markets, it's 
had very little effect. Uh, we peaked out three, four weeks ago where we had a, a, a bigger jump in recovery of weekly sales to around $5 million, and then they're off to about $4.7 million in weekly sales. You can see that chart in our uh, earnings supplement, which is posted on our website. But that, it's just a little bit, right? That's a you know five, six, seven percent um, off of the of the peak recovery. But that's also exacerbated by California closing the dining rooms again. So it is you know a modest effect there. I mean, our our delivery business went from forty percent to go in delivery to seventy percent to go in delivery. And so you know in California where you have the dining rooms closed again, uh, you know you're, you're not getting that incremental amount, but um, certainly a huge uptick in delivery. The East Coast brands, uh, Hurricane Grill and Wings, Buffalo's Cafe, have been very, very strong and resilient using the outdoor dining porches that they already come with. They're already built that way to start with. So we're very fortunate that they have those outdoor beaches or outdoor kind of fake beaches with a bar and sand or the screen porches. Um, we are also readying the franchisees for the winter and using the, the Game of Thrones saying that winter is coming. I mean, we, we want them to be ready. And so we're encouraging them to order their heaters, order the, the tents or the, the plastic walls that they might need to have in place if this continues in some way on the dining room side, because it, it would be awfully hard to get all that stuff if you try and order it, you know, October 1. Right. Okay. And if you just provide us a little bit more update on the Ponderosa and Bonanza brands, uh, you know, yep. where, where are we with those right now today? Yep. So across our system right now, about half the Ponderosa and Bonanza restaurants have temporary closures of some kind, either either completely closed or the dining rooms, you know, indoor are closed and they don't really have outdoor dining rooms, so they just have delivery and to-go. Um, that's a lot of states in the Midwest that have uh, been on the fence about what to do with the guidelines. So that's the brand that, of course, has been hit the hardest here. And uh, more than half of our total change in system-wide sales year to date uh, it, through, this is through the end of July, not through um, the end of June, but through the end of July, uh, like 49 million out of 92 million of our drop in sales um, comes from Ponderosa and Bonanza. So, you know, a, a significant amount there. Um, and we've also had a few closures there, and, and hence we decided to take an impairment on the goodwill of that brand just to right size it with, um, you know, what's happened there. Um, it, it, the rest of the brands have really been quite resilient. I mean, we've had a little bit of, of, um, of drop in, in our, like our Yala or Elevation Burger brands, but Fat Burger, Hurricane Buffalo is very, very strong. They make up uh, 75% of the revenue base. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's um, a little difficult in the Midwest. And also Puerto Rico. There's 24 Ponderosas in Puerto Rico, and they and they make up uh, you know ha more than half of the closures. The temporary closures are still closed there. Okay. And, and I think in the, in the past you'd mentioned you, know, you were – probably guessing you'd have anywhere from 10 to 15 permanently closed once we come out of this. Is, is that still what you're looking for? Yeah, that's right. We think that fr resulting from the pandemic, not, not closing in the ordinary co co course like your lease is up or something right. like that, um, there's about 15 that we've targeted that will permanently or have permanently closed uh, from, let's say, March, you know, March uh, 1 or March 10 forward. And that's all pandemic related. No other, no other reasons there. And again, okay. you know, those are generally the lower performing stores. So, you know, if you closed 15 out of 370 restaurants, you know, it's a small percentage. But their their contribution to revenue is generally even smaller than that because that's not the uh, that's not the same you know uh, contributor that they would be as a as a unit count percentage. Right. Okay. And I think last quarter you talked about, you know, a, a cash burn in the one to two million per quarter. Um, is that where we still are? Are we seeing some improvement in that? You know, what, what do you think about that going forward? No, it's significantly better, significantly better. We're, we're um, at, at a break-even or positive cash flow um, spot today in terms of, of total revenues, it's, it's just a different situation. It's not negative at all. We're not burning. Um, you know, we, we may not be throwing off as much excess as we did before, but it's significantly rebounded. That's good news. Yeah. I, I, and, 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 you know, like April, for, April for everybody was a disaster, and then there were reopenings that started in May and, and then, you know, continued into June. So it bounced back very quickly. Uh, it has, it sure has a 
ways to go, but, um, you know, Hurricane Fatburger, um, Buffalo's Cafe, and even Elevation Burger all are, are, are real contributors to the bottom line. Ponderosa and Bonanza is maybe 15% of revenues and, you know, beaten up badly by that, but um, uh, we've had a significant bounce back. We're not burning cash anymore. That's good. All right, I will jump back in line let someone else ask a question. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as a reminder, if you do have a question, you can press 1-4. And the next question is from the line of Grigory Fortunov, a private investor. Please go ahead. Hey, Andy, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Andy, what's the current cash position? Uh, a little over $6 million. $6 million. Okay. Um, so every every quarter you have an interest payment, I I believe. Um, can you what what does that amount to on a monthly basis? Uh, I'm sorry, a quarterly basis. Yeah. So the interest payment is about seven hundred and seventy five thousand dollars a quarter. We have. Okay. I mean, our debt service coverage is, is like three x. We have plenty of cash flow to cover our debt service and cover our dividends and all those things. Okay, that's great. Um, uh, in, the, uh, in your presentation, you said that you saw a 44% improvement in sales. What, what is the run rate as a percentage of 100? So let's say like the 19, 2019 run rate is 100. Where are, yep. we, where are we now? So, so if you look at it, and so if you look year to date, which is not your question, but you know, year to date, um, you know, across all brands, we're off about 37%. Uh, but on a weekly basis, you know, it's very different brand by brand. We're off um, somewhere in the high 20s or very low 30s. Uh, so it's like a 10-point swing from year to date. It's gotten significantly better. Um, the you know, Fatburger brand is almost flat, like 0.3% off right now. Uh, Buffalo's Cafe is up 1.5%. Uh, Hurricane Grill and Wings is off uh, maybe 10% right now. Um, that's it. You know, it's Ponderosa is off still like 75% on a weekly basis. That's really the, the big hit. Okay. Uh, last question is just what do you and think? Just, and just to emphasize that, sorry, Greg, Ponderosa and Bonanza, the royalty, the dollar royalties are not equal to Hurricane, Fatburger, uh, Buffalo's Cafe. They have a, on average, it's a lower royalty rate that was part of that system. So even if sales are off 33%, that doesn't mean revenues are off 33%. Okay. Um so what are you thinking about the second half? Like, uh, I'm obviously, you don't have the crystal ball. You don't know what's going to happen with COVID. But based on the trends you're seeing now, do you think it's going to stay like this, or do you think we have continued improvement? I mean, assuming it doesn't get worse, let's say it stays where we are. Yeah, um, I, think, I think the key takeaways there are, are several. One is we still have another 18 restaurants to open between now and the end of the year, which will incrementally drive our revenues uh, by you know almost you know another million dollars uh, in royalties, a little, little more than a million dollars, right? Because it's about sixty thousand a store, so you know, times eighteen. Um, so that's significant bump right there. That's additional revenues. Second, uh, we've had strong new franchise sales development activity. A lot of people are looking at buying franchises as a way to you know, maybe I don't want to go back to work where I was before. I want to get my own business. So that's interesting. Um, the the other brands have bounced back so sharply, the casual dining brands, that you know, I don't really see anything changing there unless, unless um, uh, there's some further closures. And you know, I don't think any of us are hoping for that. I think we're hoping that we go the other direction here, even though it will probably be slow. So the only thing I worry about is the winter weather and making sure that we've prepared those outdoor dining rooms for the winter. Places like California don't have that issue, but on the East Coast you certainly have that issue, so we need to make sure that we've gotten set up for that. Um, and, you know, we're really well positioned, having completed our preferred stock offering uh, earlier in the month uh, or, or end of last month. We're very well prepared now, you know, to weather the storm, have the liquidity. Uh, there are ample acquisition opportunities being presented to us, and I think that we'll take advantage of one or two of those in the near future and use our securitization facility, which, as you know, is expandable, like an accordion feature and with the accordion feature and uh, that low-cost long-term financing. It's a great time to look at long-term healthy brands that we can put into our portfolio, not, not huge turnaround situation deals. We don't need the heavy lifting right now, but there are plenty of opportunities where we can make acquisitions that are opportunistic right now, and I think that's um, just a key. Uh, you know, valuations are lower. There's opportunities being presented to us, and we're going to take advantage of that. 
Okay, and I just want to make sure I heard this right. So as we stand today, no improvement, same levels. Um, between cutting expenses and improvement in the revenue, there's no loss, no no more expected actual cash loss. You're going to be flat to up a little on the the cash going forward. Right, we're not burning we're not burning cash at the one to two million dollars a quarter rate um, that we were before. And we're not suffering the losses. I mean, there there could always be a change if dining rooms are closed or whatever. But assuming things stay the same, I don't forecast uh, or see that happening. And we're also promoting our virtual restaurants concept across all our brands, and that's something as a competitive advantage that other franchisors don't have. We own eight different brands. We can let our franchisees sell other brands for delivery and to go only on the platform, and other guys can't do that. So it's another way to help mitigate any drop in revenue. But, um, you know, I feel very comfortable about where we are. I'm not losing sleep over it. We, You know, we know we have the, the problems we discussed, like with in, in Ponderosa and Bonanza, but the other brands have really adapted well. Ponderosa itself has adapted well to having a, a server scoop up all the food on the, on the salad bar and all-you-can-eat buffets for the guests uh, once they order their, their, their entree uh, rather than self-serve. But it's whether the states let the dining rooms open again. That's the only issue is the, is the dining rooms being open. It's not the service style. So I really feel like we're well-positioned to get through this and, and, uh, you know, and, and also be opportunistic. Okay, but just from a point of view of like what your cash is versus your previous burn, where someone might say, "Oh my God, there's a couple months of cash there." Now you have your there's like plenty of runway. If, if we, plenty of runway. Right. So if we end the if we go to the next quarter, same spot we are today, you're going to have a similar amount of cash in the bank than you have today. Correct. Correct. Okay, that's it. Thanks, Andy. Good job you, navigating you. this uh, ridiculous time. Hopefully, but this this will be the last uh, messy quarter. Thank yeah, you. I, I hope so. And I hope you guys all have power on this. Thanks. And once again, as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, you can press 1-4. It looks like there's no other questions. Did you want to prompt again or go to closing comments? No, I think we I think uh, we can close now. And I'd just like to thank everybody for taking the time to participate in our second quarter earnings uh, discussion and asking questions. And uh, feel free to reach out with us if anything else comes to mind. Thank you all again, and we'll talk to you uh, in in the near future here with more exciting stuff. That will conclude the conference call for today. We thank you for your participation, and you can now disconnect your lines.